Halo 5's multiplayer was extremely divisive amongst the Halo community, not only for its changes to the gameplay formula with things like Thrust and Ground Pound, but also just the launch state of the game, which drove many players away, some of which never returned to Halo 5. Now obviously, if you disliked Thrust or Hover or Ground Pound or Spartan Charge, Halo 5 was always going to be a tough sell to you. But for many, Halo 5 fell off due to its lacking features at launch and not necessarily the core gameplay. So today we're going to compare the launch of Halo 5 and the months after to the state of Halo Infinite and see not only some of the repeated mistakes that 343 has made, but also a whole new level of blunders. Now obviously before we get into this video, I just want to put out a few things. First, we are purely focusing on the multiplayer. I am not comparing Halo 5's campaign to Halo Infinite's campaign because that's a topic for a different video and also those aren't really a part of the live service package of the Halo experience. Halo 5's campaign came at launch obviously and while it wasn't very good, it was the complete campaign and Halo Infinite also has a complete campaign outside of co-op. Now Halo Infinite could end up with campaign DLC in the future, but like I said, we're going to be focusing purely on the multiplayer side of things. I also want to say that I'm not one of those people trying to tell you that Halo 5 was purely a better game than Halo Infinite, or even that I enjoyed Halo 5 more. However, if that is you, that is also totally fine because that isn't the purpose of this video. I'm not going to try and convince you one way or the other on the core gameplay loops for the two games. At the end of the day, while while I prefer one over the other, it's totally subjective and up to your personal preferences for what you enjoy in a Halo game. Today's video is purely taking an analytical look at the launch state of both Halo 5 and Halo Infinite and the months that came after launch, as both games have been heavily criticized for being unfinished. However, while I never remember people defending that about Halo 5, tons of people seem to be kind of apologetic and want to defend the state of Halo Infinite, saying that it'll be later on fixed. So that's kind of what I want to get out of the way. So first things first, and this isn't necessarily the main point of the video, I want to talk about the main bugs and issues that these games had at launch up to about roughly two and a half to three months after release, which is roughly where we are at in Infinite's life cycle. For reference, Halo 5 launched on October 27th of 2015, and Halo Infinite's multiplayer launched on November 15th, or if you want to give 343 the benefit of the doubt, we can even use the December 8th date. It really doesn't make much of a difference for what we're going to talk about in this video. So for bugs and issues specifically, there's really only one main thing I remember back in Halo 5, and that was heavy aim. Now, that was an issue that was never fixed throughout the lifespan of Halo 5, and it plagued the game for its entire existence. Now, we do also have to give the caveat here that Halo 5 was purely an Xbox game, although it did get a PC version later that we won't really be talking about because it wasn't a full version of the game. Now, Halo Infinite, on the other hand, still to this day, has a lack of PC optimization, where the game crashes on PC more, and it just overall doesn't run as well as it should on PC. Also, we have to include the big team battle was broken for about two months, though it has since been fixed in Halo Infinite. There's also the extreme desync and server issues that people run into on a daily basis in Halo Infinite. And then obviously there is the hacking issue in Halo Infinite. All of these things were not an issue in Halo 5, though some of these things like hacking specifically are mostly because the game is on PC and free to play. So obviously Halo 5 didn't fight those things at launch. Now bugs and issues aside, eventually they do expect the game to kind of be polished up and fixed. What I mainly want to focus on is the actual content. So let's start here at Halo 5's launch, October 27th. So here are the playlists that Halo 5 had at launch. And I should note that all of these playlists that we're going to be talking about in this section were all ranked playlists. We had Team Arena, which included the game mode Slayer, Capture the Flag, Strongholds, and Breakout. We had a Team Slayer specific playlist, a Breakout specific playlist, a Free For All specific playlist, a SWAT specific playlist, and then a weekend rotational playlist that brought in things like doubles or arena breakout, along with other different things that would rotate in over the weekend and then rotate out. Like I said, these were all ranked playlists though, as none of those had social versions at launch. Now on the other side of the game, we had Warzone and Warzone Assault, which was Halo 5's new grand PvPVE mode, which utilized the rec system in the game and allowed players to play this PvEVP mode where you would fight to capture bases, fight bosses, and do other objectives. Now, Warzone was something completely new and fresh to Halo 5, and in my opinion, it was pretty fun. It was held back kind of a bit by the rec pack system and the fact that you had these one-use items that you didn't necessarily want to use if you were a player not purchasing the rec packs with money, but overall, the game mode had 
some good ideas to it and it was pretty fun. You can also go back to Halo 5 content and Warzone content is something that did pretty well on YouTube, on Twitch. People enjoyed the game mode. There was an entire community behind Warzone and it is something that was heavily supported throughout Halo 5's lifespan. Now that was pretty much Halo 5's kind of launch playlist. Like I said, you had Warzone and Warzone Assault as sort of the social playlist and then you had all the ranked playlists that we talked about earlier. So you had five permanent ranked playlists with the rotational weekend playlist being a sixth playlist and then you had Warzone and Warzone Assault adding in two more kind of social playlists. You also obviously had custom games in Halo 5 though at launch there was no custom game browser. Though unlike Halo Infinite you could adjust game mode settings and they would actually properly save so they worked a little bit better than Halo Infinite's currently but they weren't anything super special at this point in time. Now for maps Halo 5 launched with 10 arena maps so 10 4v4 maps two of which were forge made maps and two of which were kind of the remixed versions of other maps though these maps were unique enough to be considered their own map so basically eight maps and two forge maps you also had the breakout maps which there were five of at launch all of which were made in forge and then you had the three totally unique warzone maps which also had the warzone assault variants which were kind of more focused and smaller versions of those existing three warzone maps so this was everything you had at halo 5's launch it was wasn't perfect and there was a lot missing compared to previous Halo games, but there was a decent amount of stuff there with the main notable exclusions being social matchmaking and the lack of Forge at launch. Obviously, like I said, we're not going to talk about the campaign here, but I do think it's important to note that Halo 5 also had co-op for the campaign at launch, which included the standard four-player co-op that had become the standard in recent Halo games. Unfortunately though, Halo 5 did not have a split screen feature, so this co-op was purely online co-op. Another feature that Halo 5 did have at launch was the theater mode, which we won't apples to apples compare Halo 5's theater to Halo Infinite's theater. We'll just say both of them were a bit buggy and a bit messed up. Another feature that Halo 5 had at launch was a very primitive spectator mode, although the public version of the spectator mode was not available until the monitor's bounty update, which came December of 2016. Next, let's look at Halo Infinite launch, which happened on that November 15th date, or like I said, you can also consider the December 8th date, because all the content we got on November 15th was also the content that we got on December 8th. So here for playlists, we had Social Quick Play, Bot Warm Up, Big Team Battle, and then we had the Ranked Playlists, which are basically all the same, but they were broken up into three separate playlists. Ranked Cross Play, and then Solo Duo for both controller and mouse and keyboard. In the Ranked Playlist, you had four game modes, Oddball, Strongholds, CTF, and Slayer. BTB was obviously the BTB 2.0 mode, which included the game modes Slayer, Total Control, Stop, Stockpile and CTF. Along with these playlists, Halo Infinite also has the Academy, which includes weapon drills for every single one of the weapons in the game, and the training mode that allows you to play in kind of a sandbox-esque mode to practice out different guns or to just work on your aim. Halo Infinite also has the occasional rotational events, which are things like the Tenrai event or the Cyber Showdown event that bring a limited time playlist into the game for a week or so at a time, and these come and go throughout the season. Halo Infinite also obviously has custom games Though in Halo Infinite, like I mentioned, they are very buggy and you're basically unable to save variants of game modes as a lot of times they completely default back to the default settings as soon as you try to reload them. Now for maps, Halo Infinite has 10 maps at launch. You have the seven 4v4 maps, two of which are no longer in ranked, though at the time of launch, only one was not in ranked, which was launch site. And then you have the three BTB maps. So in social quick play, I should note that basically all of the game modes were the same as ranked, except for the inclusion of one flag CTF on launch site and the version of behemoth that you played in social was different than the version you played in ranked as it included the vehicles other than that though the quick play playlist and the ranked playlist basically were the same thing except you had radar and you spawned with an assault rifle and a sidekick instead of the br starts and no radar that you had in ranked but for the most part they are very similar playlists at launch another feature that halo infinite had that we talked about earlier with halo 5 was the theater mode and again while halo infinite has theater mode it is currently pretty pretty buggy and not the best experience, though it does exist in the game. Halo Infinite also has the spectator mode at launch, which is a little bit more robust than Halo 5 spectator mode at launch. Now, as you can see, just comparing the launches of these two games, it's actually shocking 
how far behind Halo Infinite is in terms of content compared to Halo 5, which at the time, Halo 5 was completely panned for having a really shallow launch and ignoring entire portions of the community in terms of the more social casual side of the game. Now, Halo Infinite has basically done the same thing again, although this time at least you have social playlists. Now, if we fast forward about two to three months, which is roughly where we are today, this is where it gets even more shocking. So while the first three or so months of Halo 5, 343 really had a roadmap in place. They were adding in content, they were adding in maps, they were fixing things. Halo Infinite, about three months in, has added effectively nothing in terms of content. We've gotten some of those events that I spoke about earlier, but other than that, it's mostly just been small fixes and things like that. And so this is the part of the video that really opened my eyes when I was doing the research because it's just so shocking as to where the game is at. So let's first look at Halo 5. So like I said, Halo 5 launched on October 27th. Now the first update for Halo 5 was titled Battle of Shadow and Light and this came out on November 18th and this is where we finally got big team battle for the game. Though it is important to note, this was still a ranked playlist as social did not exist in Halo 5 at this time outside of the Warzone playlist. BTB launched with four maps, all of which were made in Forge and it is important to also note that Halo 5 never got a proper developer made BTB map. Along with the BTB maps, we also got a variety of new armors, skins, nameplates, assassinations, and vehicle and weapon variants that played directly into Warzone. This update compared to some of the later Halo 5 updates was pretty shallow. But now if we move on to December 16th, this is still before the end of the year. This was a lot bigger update and this was the Cartographer's Gift update. In this update, we got Forge and we got the addition of the Spanker rocket launcher, which was the return of that nostalgic rocket launcher to the game. There was also a brand new Warzone map, the Battle of Noctis, and a new arena map, which was Overgrowth, which was a remix of Plaza. There was also two additional BTB maps, both made in Forge, which was Entombed and Antifreeze, and then we got the addition of Social Playlist, so everything was no longer just ranked, and we got the start of Ranked Seasons, as Preseason was now ended. Along with this update, you also got a basic file browser to obviously go along with Forge. We also got Advanced Controller settings, along with Machinima controls for customs, and we also saw more wrecks like skins, assassinations, and armors. So in this update, which came before the end of the year, Halo 5 now had Forge and two additional maps, along with the two more Forge maps that were made for BTB. And this is before two months after launch. Now, if you extend this kind of lens that we're looking at to three months, which we have not hit yet for Infinite, that is important to note, Halo 5 got the Infinity's Armory update, which added another new arena map in Riptide, which was a remix of Fathom, and a new Warzone Assault map, Urban, which is a remix of Battle of Noctis. We also got the addition of the Halo 2 Battle Rifle and over 50 more wrecks, including weapons, armors, emblems, and all that good stuff. So obviously, I already talked a little bit about the wreck system, and it wasn't the best thing in the world. But as you can see, three months after launch, Halo 5 had all of this content that had been added into the game post-launch on top of the launch of the game, which already had much more content than Halo Infinite currently does. Now, if we swap over, obviously, we need to look at Halo Infinite. So Halo Infinite, two months in, which is currently where we're at today, 343 has added in some new playlists in Tactical Slayer, Team Slayer, and Fiesta. So these are now permanent social playlists that were added into kind of a company quick play. We also obviously continue to get the rotational events where we've gotten things like Tenrai with Fiesta, and we also recently had the Cyber Showdown event, which had the Attrition game mode. However, as that rotated out, that's no longer a playlist that is still in there. 343 has also attempted multiple fixes for kind of the store and the microtransactions, along with the progression system for the game, and we won't really go into the details of those because I've done many videos on those, and that's basically it for where we're at today. Now, if we extend this out to three months like I did for Halo 5, it is important to mention that we do have the upcoming February patch, which is supposed to tackle some of the issues the game is having, although we don't really know exactly what it's going to tackle, and 343 has mentioned a ranked overhaul that is supposed to be coming mid-season sometime, although again, we don't know exactly when it's going to come. Along with this, we also have Season 2 to look forward to, but that's all the way out into May. And that's basically it. That's everything that we've gotten for Halo Infinite after launch, and that's everything that we as a community know is upcoming for Halo Infinite. And I think it's just really eye-opening when you look at that and you compare it to Halo 5 and all of the content it was getting post-launch. Clearly, Halo 5 was much more ready to be a live service game, and they had a roadmap with the content that they were going to add into the game. If Halo Infinite was at where Halo 5 was 
at at the time. It would need to have Forge already in the game, which we're not going to get until probably Season 3, and it would need almost a handful of new maps like Halo 5 had, even if some of those new maps were remixes. The remixes, while kind of an iffy system in some people's eyes, definitely played unique enough to be considered new maps. I also think it's really important to note that we talked about some of the Forge maps that launched with Halo 5 and also obviously all the BTB maps. It's pretty eye-opening when you think that every Halo game since Halo Reach launched with some Forge made maps, even in Halo 5's case when Forge wasn't in the game at launch. However, Halo Infinite obviously did not launch with any Forge made maps and we haven't heard of any Forge made maps on the horizon, which can only shine some light on probably the state of Forge at the time because even if they were just to add in some Forge made maps into matchmaking, I think that inclusion of fresh content is something that most players would be very welcoming of at this time. So is Halo Infinite at its core a better game than Halo 5? Now that's a question you must answer yourself. But the question I want you to reflect on after this video isn't is Halo Infinite a better game than Halo 5 was, but rather how is Halo Infinite so unprepared to be a live service game, both on launch content and post launch content. Now we can look at a variety of other games across gaming. And one thing you'll notice with these free to play live service games is they get content. Now obviously Halo Infinite does have some content in the future with season two, though we don't know what that is going to be. Most other live service games in the gaming landscape that launch are much quicker to continue to add content into the game, make changes and everything like that. Whereas Halo Infinite for almost three months has stayed pretty stagnant outside of some playlist additions and some fixes for the store and progression system, which in this world of frequently updated live service games and frequent new content addition for these successful games, but just honestly isn't enough to keep players around. Now, personally, I liked Halo 5, but regardless of my feelings for the game, for years it has been critiqued and panned for launching incomplete. I would take that launch lineup and that post-launch support in a heartbeat over what we have gotten for Halo Infinite. Now, I don't really want to doom and gloom in this video. That wasn't the point of this video, but Halo Infinite needs fixes, needs content, and it honestly already needed them to come out. And a lot is going to ride on what we actually get here with the February update and what we get in Season two. I really hope that whatever that February update is or whatever is or isn't yet planned for season two is amazing because Halo Infinite needs it and I think it needs it more badly than people are willing to admit. I also before the end of this video want to talk about how important Forge was not only for Halo 5 but just Halo as a whole. Forge in Halo 5 was an amazing addition. It was the strongest Forge we ever had and some of the things that were made in that Forge are absolutely insane. It allowed people to make game modes that were never before possible in Halo and it also allowed map makers to make really cool maps, sometimes getting very close to the quality of a developer made map. It really bolstered the content that was in Halo 5. And like I said, we got this before the end of the year, something that in Halo Infinite's case, we're not looking to get until season three, which we don't even know when that will be at this time. Forge has been a pivotal piece of Halo since its inception in Halo 3, as it allows the community to add in all of this creativity and content into the game game where Halo Infinite has none of that. Halo Infinite is solely reliant on the content that 343 gives us, also partly because of how kind of scuffed the custom games are at this time, and currently 343 just isn't getting content into the game at a fast enough rate. If we had Forge, which obviously I can't change the past, we don't have Forge now and I don't know when we're going to get it, Halo Infinite would look completely different with the content the community would be able to make, especially with some of the rumors about how strong Halo Infinite's Forge is supposed supposed to be. It really is going to be the next level of Forge, but obviously that doesn't do us any good if it's not in the game. If you go through all of Halo 5's lifespan, and we're not going to do that in this video, but you can see how many playlists and how many times Forge maps from both 343's side and Forge maps from the community were able to bolster up these playlists to add more content into them on top of the existing maps, something which Halo Infinite could definitely use. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you found this video kind of informative and eye opening. I did at least when I was doing the research for it. But other than that, follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all those places, and I'll see you next time.